Welcome back, Edgeteers. So we have my ThinkPad Lenovo. It's a P1 Gen 1. And what I'm doing right now is a upgrade refresh because I'm planning on going ahead and updating the system with Fedora 40. I wanna see how Fedora 40 will behave on hardware because I'm a little bit nervous about the changes that are coming with Fedora 40. Before I put it on my main system or even my backup system, which is uh, my, my Lenovo Yoga 6, I thought it'd be nice to go ahead and do an installation on this system, which is third down the line as far as backups go, and see what's gonna happen. So right now I am doing, actually I, I haven't done that one. I'm doing step one. I'm gonna go buy the book on this because I really wanna make sure that I eliminate all possible variables that I am able to eliminate. Uh, you know, normally I don't do this. I just jump right to the uh, upgrade. This time we'll do release version 40 when we get to that point. I am not gonna do a screen capture. I'm actually using my camera pointed at the screen. And the reason is I'm kind of expecting trouble. We are running the NVIDIA driver. Let me see if I can pull that up. So our driver version is 550.67, server version 11.0. Display name, of course, is colon zero because it's the one and only display we have. Uh, before it said it was an Intel system, the Intel integrated drivers. Now it says it's the Quadro P2000, which is an NVIDIA system, NVIDIA uh, built-in video card. So I'm curious, number one, to see how this NVIDIA card do, does. Number two, there's some software I wanna try out. Curious about, let's have a quick look here. OBS Studio. Of course, Steam. We'll check LibreOffice, not too worried about that. Steam, just so you know, um, I cannot get uh, games working with Proton. I even downloaded uh, Proton's Glorious Egg Roll from Glorious Egg Roll, and it still didn't work. So those games are not working, but I have a couple of games on here that are Linux native that are working. So at the very least, I wanna make sure those continue to work. And OBS Studio is my other big one. All right, well, I ran out of memory on my phone, so uh, not on my phone, on my camera, so I had to clear that. That's all done, and the update is all done, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a reboot. And there was a couple of things I wanted to show you when the computer actually finishes rebooting. All right, we're booted back up. And I'm going to go ahead and do, even though I know I don't need, no, actually, not that one, this one. I don't think I need to, but maybe there's an update. Let's find out. If you hear my dogs in the background, they're just playing, I assure you. They're pit bulls, so they sound really vicious. Mix. There are mixes. All right, nothing to do. I'm good with that. So we're gonna go ahead and go here because we're gonna go ahead and do the download. It will not cause the computer to reboot, which is cool. We are switching. from 39 to 40. I wonder if I, well, we're gonna see if this works. I may have to put in um, allow erasing and skip broken. I just hate doing things more than once. The other thing I'm really curious about is whether or not the XC package has been updated, and I suspect it has, or possibly downgraded, so the uh, beta of Fedora 40 was, does have a problem, so I'm assuming it's been updated. I highly doubt there was a wait. Nope, okay. So let's do 
dash dash allow erasing and dash dash skip dash broken i got to get rid of that proton vpn it's not working and hasn't been working for some time Let's see if we can get past that okay so let's have a look while the download is proceeding i'm going to put this way up here because i yeah it already stopped it looks like i'm going to have to remove the repo dot proton vpn it hasn't responded for some time definitely isn't available for for uh for fedora 40. so i need to get rid of that give me a second all right well thankfully i got the information from the fedora docs because it's been a long time since I've had to remove a repo, but pretty straightforward. Um, using this command, remove etsy yum.repos.d and the file name.repo. So I'm going to actually I already did that. I grabbed the first part. So let's do rm. This thing's been a thorn in my side for quite a while and the repo we want to get rid of is this proton vpn so let's go ahead and copy i know but i love copy and paste i can't help it forward slash i know i know i could have typed it faster more than likely let's see if we can get rid of this thing yes please remove it all right if that's how you're going to be about it i should have known better i really should have of course it's not going to let a user do it so i'm guessing it's done let's run the repo list again okay so it was right up here before I do not see it anymore. We'll just look real quick. So we got rid of the Proton VPN repo. Let's go ahead and try and install again. It's actually not an installation. We're downloading the Fedora 40 packages. Okay, so this might take a little while, so I'm going to pause. The real fun's going to start when we reboot. And that's why we're on my camera, because I just have a feeling something's going to go wrong. All right. Five gigabytes. Yes. Oh, yeah. While we were letting that download, I wanted to let you have a look at um, the information from uh, about this system. So... Plasma version 5.27.11, QT version 5.15, our current kernel 6.8.4-200, and the graphics platform is X11. <clears throat> now, if you've been using GNOME, you've been on Wayland for a little while, but this is KDE, so I'm a, a hair nervous but it should work out okay. Hardware on the system, it's actually a six core Intel Xeon and my memory is 32 gigabytes. Quadro P2000 with Max-Q design. And it's a Lenovo system and so on. And the version is ThinkPad 1. So that's what we've got. We'll see if we can run the about this system again when we get back. Hopefully it will not be an issue. I do have GNOME on here as well. So if I have to, I can log into GNOME. So maybe it'll go off without a hitch. We'll see. All right, whatever it was doing completed and we are ready to reboot. And I hope you can see the command down there, sudo DNF system dash upgrade space reboot. Here we go. If you're ever doing an installation like this, there is a trick I like to use. Now, this is a 4K screen, I do want to mention. So 
The text on the screen looks super duper duper tiny. That is because it's a 4K screen. So when we're running in KDE, I go ahead and, and do a bunch of changes to the interface, to the graphics settings, so that everything's expanded a little bit. So if you type the escape key, you'll actually get to look at everything that the system's doing. Now it's done all that. Every time you go back to the progress bar and then go back again, for some reason it always scrolls again all the way to the end. So you can either watch what it's doing step by step or you can look at the pretty progress bar. Looks like we're rebooting now. I can barely read the text. Yep, it is definitely rebooting. Let's hope for the best. All right, well, we're getting somewhere. Now, if I wanted to, I could go down here. I've got GNOME, GNOME Classic, GNOME Classic on Xorg, GNOME on Xorg, or Plasma. And we're going to take Plasma. Kind of looks like it was going to default to GNOME. Well, we don't want that. I mean, we could have it. It's fine, but primarily I use Plasma. It is sound. I don't know if you heard that. Ooh, it looks like it went ahead and undid all of my changes to the desktop. Let's see if we can get back into business here quickly. The problem is I can barely see it. Okay, I know this is one of the things I have to do. Except for the fact that I can't actually see it. Oh, okay, that helped. We'll leave it at 150. I believe the other thing I need to make an update to is the fonts. Notice how small they are. I wonder, you know, this is KDE 6. Maybe I could just do my zoom here and it would do the fonts as well. It looks like it does. Look at that toolbar. Woohoo! Well, we'll deal with that in a minute. What if we go here? Yeah. Oops. Wasn't paying attention. Let's try 160. Still too small. 200. That's really nice. Before I had to go into fonts and I had to uh, change the size of fonts, which was a little bit more work, but it appears I don't need to do that. That is really cool. Nice addition. Okay, I want to fix this. This thing is driving me nuts. Enter edit mode. I guess I can't move that panel up. Uh, width, center, position, always visible, adaptive, height. A little bit more there, fella. Too small. All right, that looks good. And presumably I can just click the X and it will keep the up the settings. Always visible, center, fill with. This is all new, that's nice. Up here, add widgets, panel, Desktop and wallpaper, global theme, configure display settings. Let's do add widgets. Let's see what we have. Because there are some widgets that I use on my other system. Particular, oops, went up into the corner. 
now. Total CPU use. Yep, that's exactly like the one I've got on my Yoga 6. Almost identical. I love it. What else do we have? If you have any suggestions or, you know, there's things that you use, let me know. All right. I think we're done here. We're done here. Let's go ahead and run about this system. I think I'm going to make this text a little bit bigger, but I'll do that later. Actually, I think I'll do it now because I want you to be able to see this better. Pretty much too large for me. Let's go down just a little bit here. Okay, my apologies if you're not going to be able to read this. Interesting how my favorites here, instead of being a very small menu, it's big and wide, which makes sense. Why not use up all this room? And then I can actually see all of my favorites. Okay, about this system, KDE Plasma 6.03. KDE Frameworks version 6.0.0, QT version 6.6.2, kernel version 6.8.4-300, FC40, Fedora Core 40, also known as Fedora, graphics platform, Wayland, and graphics processor, Mesa Intel UHD graphics, so the, the built-in Intel graphics, which I was experimenting with the NVIDIA graphics because I wanted to see how games played, but I didn't see a whole lot of difference, but I, I have to admit that I didn't do a whole lot of testing. So just curious, let's go ahead and open OBS Studio and it is working. Imagine that, it works. Oh, I'm tickled with that. That makes me really happy. Do we have a mic? Test, 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 test. I do not have my mic plugged in, but I can see the lines moving up when I talk. So I should be okay. Okay, so we did that. I really don't like, I used to have YouTube TV. I tried it for a little while. I gotta uninstall that at some point. All right, let's go for Steam. Maybe not. Oh, it only took a second. Okay. So, like I was saying before, I haven't been able to get Proton games running, but I want to try it because I've got it working on all my other systems, including my Yoga 6 running on Linux. All right, we'll let it go through the startup process. Check that out. No way! Guys, I've been trying to get this thing working for I don't know how long on uh, Xorg, X11. If this works in Wayland, I'll be surprised. The reason I say if is because my experience has been it'll freeze with this screen like it is. Come on, you can do it. I'm going to switch out my battery. Hold on. Well, it's not looking too good. I've left it on this screen for some time. 
I can still see the mouse. Space bar, escape, shift, enter. I don't see anything working here. Turn up the volume a little bit, see if any music's playing. All right, I hate to do this, but. Actually, I'm gonna do stop here. Can I? No. So I'm gonna go ahead and close it. Assuming I can. I'll do some more testing with this. I'm pretty excited. Let's go ahead and do the termination. If it can take the click, it might take a few seconds. It's hard to say what's going on, but I'll do a lot more testing and we'll see. But I am gonna run a couple more games that are Linux native and we'll see how those do. I took the process number here, 990080. Went over to my command line and it is definitely running and it looks like it has to do with steam so we're gonna kill it we'll try to give it a minus three but it hasn't responded yet so I have a feeling it's not gonna respond nicely 990080 no such process what have I done wrong 990080 Huh. Let's do this. Let's clear the screen. Look for it again. App ID. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, we don't need the app ID. We need the actual process number. Let's start with that see what happens. See if it makes any difference. No, I didn't think it would. All right, let's try kill minus nine. So it did kill the process. All right. Four, eight, zero, zero. We don't want to kill this one because I believe that's me right now. 4800-9752. And we're doing a kill minus three. Slowly but surely, I hope here comes my screen back. All right. Really what I should do now is reboot the system, but why not just go for it? We'll run Steam. <clears throat> and I want to try something that is supposed to be able to play on this system. All right, Left 4 Dead 2 I have downloaded. So let's play it and see if it actually works. Jeez, that's so tiny. So I'll have to check the settings. There's a way to make third-party apps actually larger, uh, the fonts and such. And we have to remember we're running on the Intel graphics. So I don't expect awesome things from it. That's okay though. I'm not worried about it. If I really want to, I can go back to the NVIDIA graphics. 
Before I'll do, before I do, I'll do a little research with uh, Wayland and the uh, NVIDIA graphics on this system. Oh, let's just go. The frame rate up in the corner is so tiny, I can't even see it. I think I'm gonna have to turn my camera on, on my phone. either oh well I really wish I could see what that says I want to say it says 50 something which I mean this is an older game so I kind of figured it would all right let's get ourselves a kit we need another gun. Yeah. Did I get a... I don't think I did. Somebody else grabbed it, so I'll grab this one. No. Yes. I don't know. I've never tried the axe. Maybe that'll work out for the better. Let's try it. All right. Never used this before. It sure works good. Never hurts having a fire axe. This game plays fine. Now there's one that's a little bit more aggressive I want to try. Yes. Okay. The thing is, I can barely read this. <laughs> um, I'm looking. The Witcher. The Witcher 2. Made for Linux natively. I thought that was really cool. I shouldn't say made for Linux, but ported whatever they did all right let's launch game here we go if you hear my dogs in the background they're just playing. They sound serious, but they're actually doing tug of war. Um, no, I don't want to do the tutorial. Let's do easy. <laughs> I hear rain. Looks like it's in the 50s to 60s. I'm going to go with this is actually rendering it. And frame rates in the 50s. This is not a newer game. Also, let's have a quick look at options and see what this game is set to play at. Graphics. Not those graphics. Might have to exit the game to um, get the actual graphics. That's how you've got brightness and gamma? Jeez. You know, we haven't tried this game. Let's see what happens when we use Proton VPN. That came up so fast I didn't even see it. Is it still there? Sort of. Oh, go away. OK, 
continue without signing in. They make it so difficult to just play the darn game. And play again. I'll be really pleased if this actually works. Photo sensitivity warning. This did not work. I tested Witcher 3 um, on 5.27 of Plasma and it did not work using X11. So I'll be extremely excited if it works. The question is, will it work when I switch over to the NVIDIA graphics? This is definitely a cutscene, it's not a render. Um, spacebar to skip. So far, so good. <laughs> Amazing frame rate of one frame per second. So far, no. Let's do Alt Tab and we will stop Witcher 3. Hopefully, it'll work. Boy, that was pathetic, wasn't it? One frame per second. Well, that's okay. I can make changes to that. All right. What else do we need to try? Anything else that I was concerned about? Would be nice to check out VirtualBox. Uh oh. Can't enumerate USB devices. And both of these are inaccessible, which means I probably deleted them to make more room. There is one thing I wanted to check. Somewhere there's a setting that says what should happen. Legacy applications. What if we scaled them by the system? Let's go back into Steam, see if it's more readable. I'm going to go with yes. What do you think? What is with the huge mouse? Jeez. I kind of like it because a lot of the time I have a problem figuring out where my mouse is and that's yeah that's kind of nice I don't have any other games here downloaded I think in a future video I'm gonna switch over again to the Nvidia drivers and hope for the best and try the games again we know Witcher 3 can run and it's using Proton VPN. Proton VPN. Proton. <laughs> We're gonna check the settings real quick to see what it's what it's set for because I could duplicate it in Hogwarts Legacy and it might make things work a little bit better. Oh check it out. It is not using the compatibility tool. Huh. I didn't know Witcher 3 had any native uh, ports for Linux. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let's check how, how, Hogwarts Legacy compatibility. Yeah, I, I got the uh, Proton from Glorious Egg World. It didn't work. Pretty clear I got all kinds of different things I would have to test. So. I'm going to do that on a future video. Is there anything else I should check out? I probably should open up Caden Live. And we're going to find a video to throw into it and just see if it'll play the video. And I probably should check and see if it'll render it. Okay. Add clipper folder. I know I gotta have a whole bunch of stuff around here. This'll do. No? Do tell. Okay. Definitely thinking that's a bug. I guess I want it to switch to 30 frames per second. Sure, why not? And we'll drop it down here. Let's see if it'll even play. 
And the answer is yes. Let's go full screen. And it's playing really well. Welcome back, Agitators. So, yeah. All right. We'll stop it. And let's set an endpoint. And let's set an out point. And we'll do a quick render of that tiny little bit. We use H.264. I prefer the encoder somewhere in between. So we'll go there. We'll do auto for threads. I guess that makes sense. But I always turn on parallel processing. Uh, it says it may cause render issues, but it, I haven't had a problem ever. And we'll tell it selected zone. Okay. Let me make sure I've got all this set right. Speed encoder. I don't go with custom quality. And it's going to throw this file in home mark videos on untitled. Okay, let's render it. See what it does. While we're waiting, eh, you know, 50, 60, 70% of the CPU. Not a ton. And let's go ahead and play our little snippet. That don't look good. Let's stop it and play it again. Yeah, that's not good. So I'll have to do some experimentation with that. I would say Kdim Live right now is a bust. Are there any other settings I could use or change to? Could turn off parallel processing and just have a look and see how it goes. It renders so much slower though. Watch this. So we're up at like 44 frames a second. Okay, 11 seconds. Let's see what happens. No, same thing. Let's try a different player. All right, let's try videos and see what happens. Interesting. It looks like there isn't a problem with the video, but rather with the player. I'll be darned. Most unfortunate. Give it another try. Hard to say. Um, maybe there's an updated version. Somehow I doubt it, but let's check. I got to get rid of the Fedora Cisco. Yeah. I don't need that either. So there are updates. Fascinating. There's a plugin update for VLC. All right, let me pull this up here. 305 megabytes of updates. So, I don't know, maybe it's the plug-in. We'll give it another try. We'll find out. All right, updates are complete. Yeah, I. it's been a rare, rare day when I've seen VLC not open something and a different video viewer open it. No, still no. Ah, well, I'll do some experimentation. There is one other thing I wanted to have a look at. I don't know, did I actually just close that earlier? I guess I did. Interesting how I click view. And it, yeah, hmm. 
and there's nothing there. Let me see if I can do shift control plus here. Yeah. All right. Let's find out if uh, the XZ package is the one that's compromised or if it's been updated. These menus are not working right. Yeah. Weird. I don't know. See, it's still on the menu. It's almost as if it's stuck there now. Okay, well, if that's how it's gonna go, I can't even copy it. We need an alternative command line. I'm keeping in mind that um, this is still beta. Is terminal and console the same thing? Can't close it. Hopefully they get that fixed. All right, so I have terminal. I just tried to launch the same thing, but it looked to me that these are basically, I assume anyway, they're the same thing. No, they're not. Can I make it larger? Yeah, okay. Okay, this was something that I thought they were going to do. I mean, if you want to do a fix that's quick as possible, just roll it back. Just downgrade it. So the infected package was 5.6.0 and 5.6.1. And Fedora did the logical thing and they downgraded it to 5.4.6-3. So I'm sure at some point they'll increase it, but I don't know how long it'll be. You know, if it was truly a nightmare and you were worried, you could uninstall XC. The um, fuzzer program that looks for errors and security breaches in code, I'm assuming that's going to be downgraded as well. I don't know if it will be or not. We'll just have to see. So what's going on with our other terminal? This one worked. I can close it, right? <laughs> I guess not. Close window. Well, that part worked. Close window. Okay, well, I'll just have to use the console terminal. So I honestly don't know why I haven't been using it all the time. So I'm definitely going to make a change and switch over to console. And that's good. It's working in KDE. So far, we haven't seen any faults or problems with KDE version 6.0. I'm very pleased with how it went. I'm going to probably upgrade my main computer uh, a little while after the official version of uh, Fedora Core 40 has been out. The video card in my desktop computer is an RX 580, so I'm thinking this will go, I won't say perfectly, but I'm thinking I'll have less problems with the video issues. I'm hoping. 
that would be awesome. I can play Hogwarts Legacy and pretty much all my other games, No Man's Sky and stuff like that, uh, Elden Ring right now. And I use KDE version 5. So it'll be really interesting to see if after upgrading to KDE version 6 Plasma, if it'll still behave just as well as this system is. Very pleased. Very pleased. All right, well, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, take a few minutes, maybe like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next video from Fast Gadgets. <laughs>